to welcome okay. Ari back. In the previous section, they would spoken with both Tao's. They've kind of decided one Tao is evil, one Tao is good. And we continue. So, I think we should go and have a, a little conversation over here. Probably somewhere in the middle of work best. And I beckon the others over. Come on. Okay, let's do that. As you're heading um, back, we... the standard fireballs are shooting back and forth between the towers. Well, fireballs going one way, some sort of ice water thing going back. Guys, maybe we should not be in the middle of the towers. I think it's probably safer standing close to one of them. <laughs> yes, these wizards have good aim. I doubt they'll hit us. Especially because they're aiming above the treetops and you guys are down in the trees. If you guys are sure. Well, I think, you know, it's probably just as dangerous as having a halfling jump out of a tree at somebody. I don't think that's all dangerous. Halflings are light. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, we've learned <laughs> much from the other tower. It seems this battle, this feud has been going on for many, many years. Um, both owners of these towers were apprentices to, wiz to a wizard. Um, but he passed on a number of years back. And during that time, the one apprentice, the one in the tower to our left here, the Dark Obsidian Tower, turned to darker ways and has lost his way. And it now appears has fallen in with a pack of a demon. The there other maze. There the he is. Other mage is yes. I say the other mage has been staying here to um the feud is done almost as a distraction to stop, um, I forget, is it Kalini, Kalani, to stop her from spreading her evil throughout the settlements in the region. But I think that we need to try and end the feud somehow. How do you feel about that? Well, Doris did something. Really? Oh what yes, do, it Doris? seems I did. I seem that? to have made a deal with the demon to oh, feed no. her something else. Oh, really? And yes. Why did you do that? Ah, uh, don't ask me. I wasn't the one who did it. Uh, but you I just was... said you were the one who did it. Uh, yes and no. I, I am the current con I am the current conduit of a great demon lord. It sometimes takes over my body. And now I've made a deal with a demon that I don't remember. I see. So you see my problem. I do, I do. Well, I think it is in our interest then that we help to free you of this pact, this um bargain you have made. What, what what pray tell have you offered to do? Uh, in ex I must bring the demon something to eat. Oh. For oh. now. Well, that, that doesn't sound so good at all. And I assume um, some meatloaf from the tavern is not going to suffice. I'd uh, assume not. Yeah, oh he wanted to eat us, but luckily Doris... In his state of mind, was had enough wits about him to not let him do that. I see. Um, well, th th this could actually work to our advantage. You, s you see, we have um, been speaking to the owner of the other tower, and she has been able to provision us with something which will allow us to potentially banish the demon. Now, um, now under the guise of um, feeding us to the demon, we could attempt this banishment. Oh, that's not, that's pretty smart. Yes, right. that will work out nicely. Um, and once we have banished the demon, we are to enact another spell 
to bring down the wards of the tower, which will allow um, Bula, the, the good sorceress, if you like, to neutralize um, Kal Kalyan and put an end to this feud once and for all. It is not without risk, however, for once we trigger these potent magics, we must maintain focus to stop um, the demon returning. And also, um, well, I dare say bringing down the walls of the tower will sorely upset Kalyan, and we must protect ourselves for a short amount of time until Beulah can come to our aid and neutralize her. It is a very dangerous plan, but one I feel that for the good of this region, we, we should strive to do, to undertake. Well, I'm okay with helping. I can't cast any spells, but I got arrows. Ah, that's good. If it is merely in case um, Kalyan should descend upon us and begin casting spells of her own or summon other creatures to her aid, but we will need to protect us. You, you are quite skilled um, and stealthy. Do you have any ways of working with doors? Is there any way you could block or uh, perchance even trap that trap door once we are down in the cellar? Uh, if a door has a lock, I can pick it and I can unpick it and make it locked again. That I am good at. Well, you, 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 you yourself saw the trap door. Does it have such a mechanism? Does it have such a mechanism? I was not that you saw. No, unfortunately not. <sighs> Do you have no. a lock on you? No, I, I, I prefer the outdoors to these um, towers and buildings. But if nothing else, um, being ready to fire an arrow at anything that should descend should work just as well as a lock. Hopefully. I mean, do we have, can we tie the door closed, like with some rope or like a crowbar, like to jam it shut maybe? If not, just to give us a few extra seconds of time, sometimes seconds make the difference. It does, like, if we, if we are below though, if we are within the room enacting the banishment of the demon, I, I can't see how we could put something across there. Um, I don't know. Maybe we should just see how it goes and hope. What do you What do you guys think? I think we should see how it goes. Yes. Yes, I may be able to assist in some ways. Yes, I agree. Just reading something I've got here. Um, oh, fantastic. where we take back and forth with both. Okay. Well, when do we wish to do this? Do we wish to do it uh, today? Or should we wait until the morning? I think the sooner the better. Well, 
Doris still seems to have some wounds upon him. Um, I'm just thinking it may it may be better if we were all fully rested and prepared and have a chance to learn the relevant spells which will aid us should things go askew. Well, I didn't realize Doris didn't take care of that. Doris, you should you should speak up when you're hurt. Oh, it's nothing. I'll be fine. Uh, and I like pretend to, I pretend to like blow in the air and then like tumble back down as if I'm like making fun of Doris and that if someone were to blow on him, he would fall apart in a second. That's you, Doris. I will apologize for not thinking about Doris's wounded situation and cast a healing word on him. Mm. Oh no, it, it's fine. I... <laughs> no, no, I insist. <laughs> but what of you, Shawshank? You have cast a number of your magical spells today. Do you feel as though you have enough with you for us to take on this demon and this mage? If we agree to rest for the evening and recoup our spells, then I should be fine. As it is, most of my level 1 spells aren't really anything that are going to affect the demon. It would just be the healing. Well, I don't mind think? making camp for the night. I think that is probably the safer course. Um, if we're trying to convince the evil lady that we're on her side that we should maybe make camp in her tower, yes, that definitely. way we can maybe wake up a few hours earlier and start our plan while she's still asleep. Yes, of course. And um, so we will leave it with you then, Doris and Kalini, to, after we have rested, to perhaps persuade us to enter the basement under pretense that you will be offering us up to the demon. Is that correct? Yes, that seems to be the case. Sounds good. Okay. I, although I must admit, um, I'm not entirely happy with the idea of being used as bait. But it seems yes. that it is a plan. Yes, my apologies for the situation. <laughs> yeah. So long as we come out on the winning side, huh? And I clap and Doris on the back. Indeed. Shall we go yeah. ask Kellyanne if we can stay the night? Indeed, lead on. Doris, lead on. Oh, it's me who's going? Oh, oh okay. You're the chatterbox the demons, man. Uh, Kalein, we have returned with a feast for your demon. Uh, please allow us entrance into the tower. Exception check. <coughs> Perception. Deception. Deception, right. Okay. Why, good. I have been rather too busy to go shopping. I see you brought back all the groceries he requested. Come on in. And the door swings open. I have many thanks. So I was uh, setting the scene for Shawshank and Sol Soleron, who have not been in yet. There's this tattered bed with bloody, dirty sheets that look like they've never been washed. And you're pretty sure someone was killed in that bed from the quantity of dried blood on it. Um, and then there's a trap door going downward presumably and a ladder going upward and the voice came from above before I sleep I would like to uh, pray to regenerate my spells please okay you have a prayer that regenerates your spells I thought a, a cleric had to pray for one minute per spell to regenerate his spells for the next day that's quite possible let me check your spell casting I'm not familiar with 
Prepare any oh, questions. Oh, it's just him. Cleric, yeah. yeah. You will gain all expended spell slots when you finish a long last. Okay, what's our watch order going to be? I don't think we should all go to sleep at the same time. Uh, well, I don't know. Should we? I don't mind going first. Okay. Preparing a new list of cleric spells requires time spent in prayer and meditation, at least one minute per spell level for each spell on your list. So if you were to change what spells you have, I just dropped the spellcast so you can read that yourself. But um, So if you wanted to change the spells you have, you'd have to pray and meditate based on the levels that you're changing out. To keep the ones you already, already have doesn't take anything special. Uh, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, since it only takes a minute per spell, I'm just going to have a little look through the spells well. Okay. And it's minute per spell level, so each first level spell is one minute, each second level spell is two minutes, but if you're taking a short rest, that's eight hours, you have plenty of time to do that type of stuff. Yeah, no problem. Cool. That just keeps you in the middle of the battle from swapping out the spells. Okay. So you're all in the tower on the first level with a bloody bed. Um, and she is upstairs, still, if from time to time you hear the sizzling of a fireball being shot off. She's still at it? Oh my goodness. This woman is persistent. Oh uh, yes, I, they have been at this for quite a while, so I'm sure her persistence is quite high. Well, let us get some rest. Um, so back to this watch then. Um, Shoshan, you will take first, yes? Yes, I'm good with that. Kalini? Uh, sure. Any particular watch? Would you like to go last or second? Uh, I would like to go last. I like okay. to sleep through the night. Doris? I will take second watch. Then I since that is available. Then I will take the last but one. Okay. And with that, I start to get out my bedroll and um, sort of find a spot on the floor as far away from the bloodied bed um, that is there. Okay. So, first watch. Uh, she eventually comes on down the, stair the um, ladder. She seems to be swaying a bit from side to side and uh, Stag goes over to bed and falls into it. Any actions you want to take, whoever's on first watch? Who was on first watch? Shawshank. Shawshank. I believe it was Shawshank. Okay. Any actions you'd like to take when she staggers down and into bed? Sorry, I was on mute there. I was talking and I was on mute. Uh, no, if she's passive, I'm, I'm fine. Just to let her, as long as she's no threat, let her get on with it. Yep. Second watch. She's still sleeping. Nothing really happens. Third watch. Nothing happens. Stop. Okay. On the third watch, realising that mages have to get six to eight hours sleep to recover their spells. And realising that um, now may be the best opportunity for us to strike, I quickly move over to Shawshank and give him a gentle wake. Shawshank. I'll look at the uh, at Soleron. I think now would be a better time to act. The mage is asleep, possibly having spent all of her spells. If we act now, she may be even less of a threat than we think. Yes, I agree. Ah, just one problem. What Which if Eula is? is also asleep 
she would not realise the water down and come to our aid. Perhaps Again. if she's been warned that this is going to happen, she may be on her guard, waiting, not knowing when it will happen. The she floor may. plan. She may. Hmm. I think it is worth trying, don't you? Should we wake the others? Yes, quietly. Okay. And with that, we'll try and wake um, the others quietly, one by one. Uh huh. Is there any water ready? Shh, 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 shh. I'll just give five more minutes. Kalini. Yeah? The, maid, the mage is asleep. She yeah. wouldn't have had a chance to replenish her spells. We should act ah. now. We should what? We should act now. We should the put demon? our plan in motion, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, let's Why do it. Just, but quietly, quietly. I like roll out of bed. Okay, okay. So, you guys are all awake, it sounds like. What next? Have we, have we walked Doris? I suggest you put your hand over his mouth before we wake him, because he does have a tendency to squeal and chitter and... He, he, he does. You, you better do that in case he bites. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll do that. I have 33 hit points. I should be okay from Warlock Bite. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Is that that's all worse than a vampire bite? <laughs> I'll I'll gently put my hand over his mouth and uh, and then, and then wake him up and do a shh motion with my fingers. <laughs> when he seems calm, I'll explain what we're doing in a whisper. Oh, that is my head is ingenuous. I'm not sure I can do this. But I will try. You can do it, Doris. You've not noticed any changes from Kalani, and it seems like you're all awake now. Okay. Right. Shall we descend to the lower levels? Quietly, yeah. yes. Yes. Quietly, um, so that means you're stealthing down the ladder? As, as yeah. best we can, and we're gonna we're gonna pull the trap door closed um, once the last person is. So if everyone's going descended. down, stealth checks from everyone. Okay. I pro novice just to to clarify, I I have changed my spells during my watch. I prayed, and I've changed the spells that I have available to me. All good. Cool. Still. So it's for me to do a stealth check, saying it isn't starred in my skills, do I still just drag the dice and you drop do. it at the wizard? You do, it just wizard's means you don't again? have proficiency. Okay. So you can still try and sneak, but you're not going to be as good at it. Okay. Okay, and you're wearing armor that gives you a penalty for that. So unfortunately, as soon as Shawshank gets onto the ladder, and I'm assuming he's last because he's powered in, and swings the door shut, uh, he's making a clanking sound. Shh. Uh. And um, <clears throat> the demon, and you don't hear anything upstairs, so presumably just the demon, looks up and says, Ooh, a late night snack. What have you brought me tonight? You see him. Uh, tonight I have brought you a, a paladin and a. Uh, a nice and fat. to your liking. They're way, way bigger than us. What, 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 what do you mean you've brought us as a snack? Oh yeah, sorry. There wasn't a pony down here. My bad. Oh, um, and, w and with that, I quickly reach into my pouch, bringing forth um, the copper coin. But, but, but Demon Lord, you, you really don't want to eat me. You, you, sh you should eat this noble paladin over here, pointing at Shawshank. He will taste good and virtuous. And with that, I quickly rub my thumb ac across the um, edge of the coin in a, count in a clockwise direction twice, focusing the spell energy on the demon. And you see I will this, notice. You see this tail begin to lash out to, uh, at you. And when it's halfway there, the tail and the whole demon... Okay, and he gets a saving throw. Oh my, 
I don't think that's quite enough. Almost was. Let me double check. Okay, she gets... He fails by one. Oh, yes! So he vanishes when the tail halfway down. Okay. Is there any sign of a noise from upstairs? Was there any noise associated with that attack? Uh, the tail did not make contact. It did not make any noise. And I'd already rolled to see if she heard... Um, okay. If it, so I Solar on... see if the noise was loud enough to wake her up from the armor, and it was not. So Soleron needs one minute of concentration now to keep the demon away. He does. So we all, so we all just need to stay very quiet and okay. not do anything else until Soleron's finished. Because I can't let my ward go until Soleron's finished his spell. Okay. Okay. A minute passes. Nothing has happened. Okay. I think. Well done, Soleron. I'll pat him on the back and grin. And I'll take my copper coin out of my pouch. I let out a big breath. <sighs> wow. Good job. And I'll say to these guys... That went well. I'll say to these guys, before I let go of this ward, do we stay inside or do we go out into the open? Oh. I think if we stay inside... Um, we don't have to risk waking her traveling up the ladder again. Yes, and yes, also, good idea. Yes. we have a door between us and her. Yeah, and she'll have disadvantage coming down the ladder. <laughs> okay, I'll, uh, I'll bow to Soleron's knowledge and I'll take the coin out and I will uh, hold it in the air and, and say Apollo. And with that, this pulse heads out from the towel and all of these runes on the wall of the basement fade out and also doors. This is a high, high level uh, dispel magic spell, so you are no longer bound to the axe. You can reattune later, but you are not currently attuned to the axe. Does the curse stand? The curse is still on it. Right. I don't want to let go of this axe. But you, the curse does not apply to you. So you oh. have to reattune for the curse to apply to it. Does that make sense? Right. So that was the question. That was okay. the question. <laughs> well, sorry for the confusion. So it is still cost, but you are not cost. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Cool. Anyway. So all of that is happening. And... She is still sleeping. Yes. Okay. But the war earlier said that the other lady, Bilula, was awake. And so she's been watching. And she sees all these glowing wounds fade out. She doesn't hear any screams. She doesn't hear anything going on. And so she's like, she has the time to do this right. So she casts two misty steps. One takes her halfway. The other one takes her to the top of the tower. And then she starts coming down the ladder. So she's going to tilt check. She gets advantage because the lady's drunk and asleep, and was exactly the same thing. Oh, drunk? Well, I, I said she was staggering into bed, so I was kind of assuming that she was up there with a keg of something. Oh, drunk is no way to be on a battlefield. I disagree. It's well, the only way to be on the battlefield. <laughs> well, an evil sorcerer? I mean, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Perhaps she's drinking the blood of a dwarf, which would be 95% alcohol. Mm. So she's relatively stealthy, but um, she makes it down to the bottom of the ladder, and uh, then all chaos seems to break loose. And you start hearing screaming and spells flying everywhere, and the next thing you notice, silence. Ooh. <laughs> There's pork on the head. I want to climb the ladder. Okay, you're climbing the ladder. We'll do it stealthily there. So, stealth check. I'll climb the ladder too. Oh. Quietly. So, uh, you good. first listen to Doris, 
which sounds like one man band going up that ladder. Oh my! Uh, uh, uh. Kaleni does a bit better than that. She's relatively quiet going up the ladder. There's still this strange silence. You don't hear anything upstairs. Yes, he was covered by the one man band. Right, I will open the trap door slightly. If I can. There's nothing blocking the trap door, so you open it up right. and look around. You don't see anything besides, of course, the bloody bed and the um, ladder going up. And a bunch of scotch marks all around the room with holes in the wall and whatnot. Oh my, what has happened in here? Kalani, it seems as was there was a battle up here, but it I mean, doesn't seem. The question is, who won? Yes, That's what we need to be worried about. Right. You see, up on. so what? What is in the room? Besides, is there any uh, sign of struggle or anything else besides the magical scorch marks? That's about all you see. Uh, I would like to ca to use my Eldritch Sight to see if I can find any lingering sources of magic. Okay, does that let you see through things? Oh, does Eldritch Sight let you see through walls and whatnot looking for magic? Or does it just let you see what's on the no. surface? No, it's just what's on the surface. I, I believe there is a thing about that. Cannot pe can penetrate most barriers, but is blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood, or dirt. I assume the walls of this place are possibly a foot of stone. Okay. So as you are looking around, you notice that all of the wounds are gone at this point. Um, so there's nothing magical about the walls or anything like that. You do notice a chest in the corner. There doesn't seem to be a lock on it or anything now, but you notice that there's something magical inside of the chest. Oh, yeah. it doesn't seem like they, uh, were banished anywhere, I don't think. Be careful. You know the last time you opened something, or tried to, what happened? He wasn't trying yes, to open it, he just knocked on the door. Blew himself up. Well, you knock on doors to try and open them. Or get them opened. Either way, well, how be do careful. you knock? While this conversation's gone on upstairs, can I search downstairs to see if there's anything of interest there? Okay. As you searching around downstairs, you find a bunch of gold and other... So, there's the gold, silver, there's a pretty good amount of loot downstairs in a pile that you kind of assume was the demon's bed. And it's now on the party sheet, and we can divvy that up later on. Cool. If there's nothing else of interest down there, I'll go up the ladder to see what's going on as well. Well, I mean, there's a bunch of bones and half eat well, entirely eaten and licked clean, and a bunch of other stuff like that, but nothing of lasting interest, unless you're a bone or other stuff like that collector. I'm not the bone collector, no. Okay. I will follow Shawshank um, up the ladder. Right, I'd like to uh, look into the spell. Oh, it's not locked. The, the chest isn't trapped, is it? Well, your eyes don't see any magical traps for what that's worth. Right, then I'll just try and open it. It does not seem to be locked in any way. It just opens up. 
You can see some grooves that you think may have used to be magical, but the magic dissipated when the tower was hit by that thing. And what you do find are a pair of gloves. And those are the magical thing you were seeing, and those are now in the party sheet for you to figure out what they are and someone to get. Perhaps someone will have use for these. They look like gloves to me. Yes, but they are magical gloves, from what I can see. Oh. Well, I wouldn't know heads or tails of that. Maybe we should find out who lived, and the person who lives can help us out. I believe that would be Kalani, and I don't think she's in any state to uh, talk to us currently. So, well, then we should leave. Perhaps so. we should search the rest of this tower first, the yeah. ladder going up. I agree. We shouldn't have any fear from magical traps with the dispel okay. magic. Uh, it's whether or not we just take take it easy looking for standard traps. Well, keep right, a look uh, at any of the are the doors. Are, is the door open? Uh, is the door to the, the tower open going out? Yes. No. No, it's not. Right. Right. Okay. We'll continue up then. Um, no, this. Yes. Did you say there was um some treasure and stuff? From the basement to go on to the party sheet. Yes, it's under the inventory tab. You will see 27 GP under the postal coins. Ah, right. 111 okay, so, SP yeah. under. Yep. Got it, yeah. So, you found the gloves upstairs, you found the loot downstairs. And I can click one button to distribute it, but usually we wait until the end of the session to do that. Yeah, no, no, no. I just didn't realize you'd added the stuff um, from downstairs up, so. Yep, yep. Okay. So essentially, cool. the coins are from downstairs, the gloves are from upstairs. Yep. And you climb the tower. And some perception checks as you go up. I'll give one perception check to each of you and we'll see what happens. Okay. We'll call that good for searching the tower. So, Doris, you find an imp skull. So, Leon, you find. Some ashes. Kalani, you find. You guys really are not having very good walls. A split cup. And. Shawshank, you find. Some. A, a costume. A set of clothing that's a costume, I drop that into the party sheet. So that's about all you find. And of course, on top, you find an empty barrel that has a tap in it. And it's, yeah. You're pretty sure that's how she got drunk. Okay. I don't understand the two messages you just put. No, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to drag my windows around on the screen and I'm grabbing messages from earlier and it's dropping them back in again. That's fine. So just, just ignore them, please. Okay. Cool. Well, now what? Well, there seems to be no um, sign of this Kalani. Um, I suppose we should go and check the other tower to see if Bruder is okay and hopefully um, collect some sort of reward for finally ending this feud. Okay. Agreed. Should we stop yes, there just in case can... the person we don't we... want? Just what to make sure thought? that we're not we're not gonna be like I don't know. In case this isn't turn out the way we're thinking, maybe we should go quietly. Um, so, no. Leon, you leveled up, so... Yes. Yep, you should okay. do that at some point. 
Yep, I'll, I'll do it at the end when we take a rest. Oh, good. Well, let's um, move over. We'll, we'll try and be as quiet as we can, Kalini, but um, our skills are not quite a match for yours. Yeah, that's true, but we can try. Let us be on our way then. So, Kalani very carefully sneaks up to the tower and notices that there's a letter attached to the door. Oh, what's the letter say? Ah, yes, yes, you actually read the letter. Um, so you reach up and pull down the letter and as you read it, it says, Thank you so much, adventurers, for helping me be free from this board and be able to go and explore the world. My enemy has been bound and will not be an issue for any any time soon the demon seems to have been banished well done enjoy the loot you find in her tower and i'll return one day after i've gone off to see the world goodbye congratulations okay in the quest i'll drink Yay. to that let's have a drink good job guys well done guys brilliant fantastic Nice adventure without um, combat. Oh yeah, we didn't have combat. Yeah, that was fun. We had several opportunities. We could have had combat. All those uh, monsters when you have the forest, or they all there's uh, there was plenty of combats on the map. You guys randomly walked through the dense forest instead of following the actual paths. I mean, as you can see, I like path I expected you to follow, path you actually followed. <laughs> so there's that so there was combat available you guys just didn't actually go in that direction this I'm was okay designed with that. to be a much later quest that the lord just kept building for and you deal with once you got to be like level 10 or so um, but kudos to you guys for trying it rolling really lucky and gain a pile of XP from it Sweet. Well done, guys. Good teamwork. Well done, good, good thinking, yeah. Yeah, it was good fun. So Made all the better for having a great bunch of guys to play with. And Lady, of course. <laughs> and at the end of the world, so the fact that we finished this one does not mean that we have to stop. We can keep going. I'm willing to go another hour and 15 minutes if you guys want to keep going. Or it's a good stopping point. We could just call it quits. Up to you. Well, I have to go soon, so I won't be able to stay, but you guys should keep going if you'd like to. Yeah, it's, it's quarter to ten here as well. I'd love to keep going, but yeah. I should probably go and spend an hour with my wife before bedtime. Yeah, likewise, I'm happy to stop here. Sounds good, guys. It's been, yeah. been a good session, so I'll level up my character, and then um, I'll call it a night, I think. Cool. It was a lot of fun. Um, and I'm glad well done, Pronobis. Well done. Yes, thank you, Pronobis. Oh, guys, we have to divvy up everything before we go. All right. Yes. Ah, yes. So you Pro have Nobis, one I could do with magic on. gloves and a bunch of money. Doors. Oh, yeah, we need to work out what the gloves are, don't we? Yep. Yeah. Can anybody uh, do our car net to see if they can recognize the symbols on them? We can, can do a short a... rest and play with them. I can have a look using our car net, and I, I dare say um, Doris may have some skill in that arena as well. Yes, I can look into the history of the uh, gloves. So at least try to I do at least know where they came from, and possibly what they could do. Okay. I'll I'll make an arcana roll as well, and hopefully working together we should be able to ascertain what they what their purpose are. Cool. So one history, one arcana, and let's see what you guys learn. Into the tower or into the tower. Public? Uh, are we both rolling Arcana, or...? Okay, so Solaren, um, that was animal handling. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> gloves of animal handling, well You're done. pretty sure you cannot tame these gloves and devour you out. <laughs> okay, so Doris is 
looking at the history of all of this. Um, and Doris, you'll remember in Legends of guys wearing special gloves, walking up to towers, the people shooting arrows all around them, and then just grabbing the arrows nonchalantly out of the air and tossing them underground. Uh, so Laren, you're pretty sure that these gloves work really well with a high dexterity, as long as you have your hands free. Okay. Oh, it, it, it looks as though these gloves, from what you were saying, Doris, are, um, give somebody the ability to snare arrows out of the air. Um, I would imagine it would be best suited for somebody who is nimble and agile, um, which certainly isn't me, and hmm, glancing at Shawshank. I dare say our dwarven friend here is neither nimble or agile. Um, well, although he did put doubt in my mind with that one, the way he managed to catch all of that ale out of thin air. Um, <laughs> I do have a high dexterity, yes. Question is, are they something that would benefit me more than anyone else in the party? Hmm. I think the uh, idea is no use to me, but perhaps either yourself or Kalini would be the most suited for these. Is Kalini a rogue? I am, but I try not to get shot at, if possible. <laughs> do, do, you, do you have a shield, um, Shawshank? Yes. In, in which case, your both of your hands would be occupied, so they would not really be of much use to you. We do have the option of, of converting them to gold and splitting it between us. I'm open mm. to that, because I use a bow, so my hands are always... If, I, if I'm in a fight, I'm probably using my bow, so my hands are not really free. You do, but generally speaking, your one hand is when you're not firing. So when, when you're being fired at, it's always assumed that whilst the bow is two-handed, you hold it in one hand, so you've got the other hand free, effectively. That's true. That, that, that's how I've always played it, and I've always known it's been played. Um, to an Obis might have a different idea on there, but generally speaking... It's only for the brief moments in time where you're firing, but your other hand is engaged. That's a good point. It, it seems a waste to convert it to gold, um, particularly as we cannot really spend the gold on ale. Um, I think, you know, items of such quality are, are an exception, um, the rare find, and it would almost be counterproductive to see them wasted and go I'm to quite loss. happy for Kalani to take them then if Kalani wants to take them and if she can make use of them that's fine by me or, or perhaps uh, even I mean we're we'll missing Doris out yeah I mean Doris yeah, could range Doris. attacks are they, and arrows yeah are they of any use to you Doris uh I have quite a low dexterity so I don't think they'd be very helpful to me I'm happy for Kalani to take them then if uh, she can make use of them one thing to remember about the way we have this game set up is whether you take something increases your G GV or gold value, which never decreases. And if multiple people want the same item, the person with the lowest GV gets it. So if there's something nope. you only kind of sort of want, it's better to throw it on the freebie pile back at the village or to find someone that can buy it and then split it, um, split the gold amongst yourselves. And sometimes we even have people that say, I don't even want to pick up the gold from the mission. I'd rather keep the low GB and wait for the very rare magic drop. Right. So it's up to you guys how you want to do that. Uh, I mean, it's cool. I, I just don't, I don't know. I usually just don't get shot at, or at least I try not to. If I'm in the position where something is shooting at me, I'm probably not in a good place. And that probably means everyone else is dying. Okay. Well, if if that is your thoughts on it, then it seems like the gold or sell, selling them back at the town may be the other option then. Either I'm way, okay I'm, with I'm, that. I'm good either way, yeah. Okay. Yes, go to the, it goes to the freebie pile, I suppose. I don't know enough about the economy to uh, to make a point on this, so I'm quite happy to do whatever the party wants to do. And the town is just starting off, 
So I'd say the richest man in town at this point is Vindomir, the barkeeper. And if you could persuade him to buy it, and he gives you all of the money he's owned at this point, he could probably pay you about 30 GP. On an item that's worth 100 to 500 GP, that's not a great price. But if you guys want, you can do that. Um, you need to persuade him as to why he wants gloves of missile snaring. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to find a bio in this city. You need to go somewhere else. Oh, I, I, I think I think persuading him would be quite easy. You know, yeah, he probably gets into bar fights, and if someone throws a bottle at him, maybe he needs to catch it before it hits him. Are we having to take only 30 gold pieces for something that's worth between 1 and 500, though? Probably not. But, you know, the persuasion would be easy enough, as Kalini says. I think, you know, the amount of bottles or tankers they get thrown of him when his, once his patrons realise they can't get drunk off the stuff. <laughs> So is that something you'd like to attempt, or is that something that's just not worth it? Stick it on the freebie pile, or is it something you want to take the gloves and sell it in some other city later? Um, We're only going to get seven well, gold pieces each out of, out of yeah. selling them to him for 30, aren't we? He's not even going to buy us anything good no, from the shop really ourselves. The only other right, thing to see if there's anything I'm just checking up on a different character. Um, you said that Vildemir has. 30 GP. Uh, Varric has 96. He could probably buy it off you if okay. he wanted to increase his GV any further. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, Varric, that would be a player to player trade. And essentially, right, one so it has to would be an take active. it. And then they can sell it to you. And player to player, there is no GV assigned for that. Um, oh, but they would take the okay. GV hit for the gloves, so they would take a 500 GV, the maximum sell price hit, and then they could sell it to you for less, uh, whether you'd right. be willing to buy it for. Could 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 we could we not trade it as a um as a group thing? Yeah, like divide it amongst the group. I'd allow that, but you all get your share of the larger GV, and then your share of the lesser money coming in. So, Velik, what is? Uh, and the reason why Doris can speak for Varric is he has both characters. Right, okay. Um, that's another character he can play as, and that character is much higher level. So, now speaking as Dor uh, now speaking as Varric, what offer would you make them? Well, you guys seem to want, uh, you said 100? Unfortunately, I can only give you 96. Will that suffice? Yeah, whatever. Yep. And it is done. So I would drop the gloves into Velik. Does anyone want the costume or just stick that in the freebie pile? I'll put it in the pile. Yep. Yeah, chuck that in the pile. Yeah. 96 plus 27. You guys all get... Oh, cool. Nice. Nice. Do we save the character sheet when we log? Huh? Um, the character sheets are automatically be saved internally. You can keep your own copy externally. That's up to you. Okay. So, Pronobis, that's what I wanted to go through before I leave here. When I played at the weekend, the character that I used um, it didn't save any of the details off on it, so I just wanted to make sure that I come out of here properly. So I get a copy of this character on my serve, my computer. Um, yes, what you can do there is when you log out of this, you should be able to log into your own computer. And I'll stay on a while to talk you guys through this if you have an issue. Uh, you can log onto your own computer, and there should be multiple games that you've logged into. This particular one is called FGC uh, West Marches Hyphen Pronobus, and it's that Hyphen Pronobus that keeps this data separate from all of the other West Marches to get run by other DMs and protects against that data loss that you're talking exactly about. Um, so each GM is supposed to set up like that. If they don't, we can still run into data issues. But hopefully you have that issue fixed. So you log into that and from there you're looking at your character sheet from the DM view and you can type the command backslash export and there you can save it. I'm going to stop recording at this point because people won't care 